Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church of Salt Lake City and our Sunday morning virtual worship service. I pray that you are feeling blessed this morning as we gather in worship and take this time set aside to commune with God and commune with each other, even if it's, even if it's just virtually. If you are craving a live experience at 9 o'clock this morning, uh, I will be... We'll be having a uh, worship service, socially distanced worship service in the parking lot uh, at, here at First Baptist Church. And this morning we are, uh, pr I'm preaching on a text from Jeremiah 18, the same text that I preached on 10 years ago when I was first called to this church, uh, my very first sermon. And in that sermon, uh, if you were around, you'll remember that Kevin Wynn threw a pot as I was preaching because the text today is about a, a potter and Kevin uh, threw a pot as I was preaching. And we'll be recreating that this morning in the parking lot. So that's kind of an added bonus. Same sermon, but uh, it'll be a little bit different because of uh, just the, the context and because Kevin will be there. So join us for that if you are able at nine o'clock uh, this morning. Uh, as we prepare our hearts for worship and before we pray I just I do want to acknowledge and uh, uh, lift up our country as we grieve over the loss of one uh, of an incredible hero Ruth Bader Ginsburg Justice Ginsburg who has served her country so well and is a true uh, a true patriot and public servant and um, her efforts around so many uh, justice issues, but also particularly in standing up for the rights of women, has made this country a better place, particularly for my daughters. And so I, with gratitude, I uh, wish her to rest in peace and I say to her, well done, good and faithful servant. Why don't we uh, begin this morning by bowing our heads in prayer. Our loving and gracious God, we are so grateful for this day that you have uh, set aside for us to be in worship together, to commune with you, to commune with one another, to feel the presence of your Holy Spirit, to be inspired by your word, and to just acknowledge that you, all of the many gifts that you have bestowed upon us. May we bless others even as we are blessed. Be with us this morning. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. So our text for today comes from Jeremiah 18, beginning in verse 1 and going through verse 6. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, come down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working on his wheel, at his wheel, the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hands, and he reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as the potter has done? Says the Lord, Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. May God add a blessing to this reading of the text and cause it to be the inspired word for us today. So Jeremiah is called by God down to the potter's house to watch the potter at work at his wheel. And he observes that while the potter starts out to make a certain kind of pot, and then if things didn't go quite according to plan, the potter merely reworks the clay into something else. And then God speaks to Jeremiah saying, Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as the potter has done? This particular assignment is a, a bit of a break for Jeremiah. Jeremiah has the unhappy job of letting the people of God know when God is not pleased. And during Jeremiah's tenure, God was not pleased a lot. Just prior to this, in fact, Jeremiah was commanded to stand at the gate of the city and harangue everyone about keeping the Sabbath. In truth, there were long lists of things that displeased God in the oracles of Jeremiah, but they all boiled down to people forgetting that it was Yahweh who brought them this far. They neglected to honor God, substituting other gods in place of Yahweh. 
and maybe most frustrating to God, was the fact that the people began to feel as though they didn't really need God's guidance or help at all. The people of God just began to look out for themselves, forgetting that they were a people, forgetting that they were God's people. And so God called Jeremiah to let the people know that these things had not gone unnoticed and that there were consequences to the path that they were choosing, namely exile to a place where they would be forced to rely on God and forced to become a people. But here in chapter 18, Jeremiah has the rare opportunity to bring a word of hope. Just as the potter has reshaped the jar into something else, so God can change the course and circumstances that have laid before the Creator. In other words, if my people will change their ways, I also will change, says the Lord. It is a crossroad moment for the people of God, and I don't want to give anything away necessarily, but they choose exile. For me, this is the crux of the whole story. If the people of God change, God is also willing to adjust. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, this seems like a word of hope, not only for ancient Israel, but for this church and for each of us as well. I've been here for 10 years now, And as I think about where we were heading 10 years ago and compare those expectations to now, what I see is that even though we started some things and didn't really go the direction we might have said, we have been faithful. We have not accomplished all that we may have hoped for in that time, but we followed where the Holy Spirit was leading and God has blessed us. The world has dramatically changed in the last 10 years, many times over. And so we also have had to change our hopes and our dreams a little bit. And God has blessed us. And we've not always known where we were going, but we were committed to following. And God has blessed us. The potter has been at work forming us into the church we have been called to be in this community. And the potter continues to shape us even now. However, we are not just passive medium to be manipulated. Unlike the clay being formed in the potter's hands, we are not passive but active participants in what the final outcome is. This is the thing. God invites us in and helps to shape us, yet we are invited to respond and to participate and to even co-create. We can choose to be pliable and formable, willing to be shaped, or we can be hard and rigid and unwilling to bend. In chapter 19 of Jeremiah, he is told to take one of the jars made at the potter's house, one that is hard and cracked, And Jeremiah is told to smash it as he stands at the gates of Jerusalem, demonstrating that a hardened pot cannot be reshaped. It can only be broken. This was Israel's problem. They were hardened and unwilling to be reshaped. I have to say I worry about the same kind of hardening in the Christian faith today. It sometimes feels as though God is trying to reshape the church into a pot that fits the world we live in, And that the church has become unpliable and unyielding to the will of the Creator. You can see signs of that in churches that long for the past without looking at all to all that God is doing in the present and in the future. They make all kinds of changes, but all those changes are meant to keep things the way they are. They had the luxury of being able to fight with one another over trivial things like the color of the paint on the wall. They had that luxury because their sense of urgency is driven by self-preservation and an I'm okay if my needs are met and what's in it for me kind of attitude. Churches that are willing to be formed by God are also easy to spot. They remember and they hold out in front the reasons that they are a church in the first place. They feel a sense of urgency driven by the desire to usher in God's just reign and for the hurt and broken world around them, not just for themselves. They are motivated by by a love that transcends one's own agenda and seek the mind of Christ. 
They feel the burden of a world full of hopelessness, brokenness, and separation. And they live as though heaven on earth were really in their grasp. They live as if the world will really change and that they can be a part of that change. I can say here with all sincerity that I have experienced First Baptist Church as that kind of place. Now, don't get me wrong, we can still be a little stubborn and sometimes we fight about trivial things and long for the past. And we can be self-absorbed at times. And we can keep working on that. Yet, for the most part, over the last 10 years, we have eagerly sought to follow Christ wherever he may be taking us. And we were excited to be on that journey. I have seen this pot change in so many good ways over the years. And today, again, we stand on the brink, ready for God to shape us into a church that is functional art. A place that not only changes the world, but that inspires others to be in that same calling as well. I guess what I'm getting at here is that we are at a time when God is reshaping us to meet the needs of the world as it is now. We were being formed into a certain kind of pot, but the world keeps changing. And in response, God, like the potter, reshapes us into a pot for this world as it is now, forming us into something great, something remarkable, something bigger than the sum of our parts. And as I look at this church and I look at the needs in the world around us, God longs to meet those needs. And there is no clay better to be just the right kind of vessel to be used of God to change this community, to change the world, than us. There are a laundry list of opportunities for this church as a people to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in Salt Lake City and beyond. And I believe with all of my heart that we are the right pot for the right job. Yet in many ways, we are still clay being formed. The wheel is beginning to turn and the hands of the potter is continuing to form us, reforming us as needed. And so we are called today to be moldable and willing to be shaped by God. And we are encouraged not to harden ourselves against the creativity of God and God's desire to see us continue to answer the call of Christ to the transforming work of the gospel and the ministry of compassion that we are called to. May God bless us in these efforts in the days to come. Let us pray. A loving and gracious God, the amazing potter that has shaped us over the 135 plus years this church has been in existence and who will continue to shape us well into the future. We lay ourselves in your hands as clay to be shaped and molded. Uh, help us to always keep our eye on where you are going and join you in that journey. We thank you for this day of worship that you have provided for us, and may it bring you honor, glory, and praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord go with you, abide within you, and work through you today and forevermore. Go in the hope and the joy and the peace and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, and God bless. Change my heart. Oh.